before we can complete the schematic, schematic preparation, uh, we need to do some calculations. Um, and there are two more measurements that we need. We need the thickness of the shoe taken at the breast of the heel, which is just anterior to where the heel stops. So it's this dimension from the outsole to the insole. And on the shoe that we're going to be using, that measurement is 14 millimeters. The other measurement that we need is the width of the shoe. Um, that measurement is taken at an angle, and we didn't get a, didn't think to get a measurement for that. I'll do it here, like so, because this is the way the stirrup is going to fit, and that is 71 millimeters. So that allows us to put in what's known as the shoe width line and the shoe thickness line on the schema. While we're using these, we're also going to go ahead and calculate the stirrup length. Stirrup length is from the center of the articulation on either side. And it's calculated by taking from the measurement form height to the medial malleolus times two, the shoe thickness times two, the shoe widths once, and the number of right angle contours times two. And for the right angle contours, the standard measurement is three millimeters difference. That gives us a total measurement of 26.1 millimeters. So I just wanted to show why we're doing this, because from the, the distal tip of the medial malleolus, down to below the sole of the shoe, the insole of the shoe, across the bottom, and back up. And because you're doing those two bends, you lose height from the bends. So this is calculating how long the stirrup needs to be so that when you make those two bends, the two holes are at the exact, um, are even with each other, and they're even relative to the midline of the shoe. Mm -hmm. We can actually, we can draw that out here. So we're looking at the stirrup with the articulation, the height to the ankle, the sole of the shoe, width of the shoe, and then we repeat that. As you see, there are two 90 degree contours here and here, and that gives us the reason for doing that, like so. You have to have an outside caliper, and it actually goes here. As I said, this point is called the breast of the heel. to where it is just touching where it will make a little mark when you move it but not really depress the leather so you want to move it over to the side and get it off without damaging the shoe any more than you need to if you're not careful if you're using a sharp one you'll scratch the leather here you don't want to do that okay so that's our measurement of 14 millimeters yeah still 14 do is we're going to add three millimeters to the width of the ankle joints. And the reason for this is that we are planning on adding a uh, corrective strap medially. And we have to allow space for this. Okay, now our show shoe width was 71 millimeters, half of that is 35.5. We go for shoe height here, or excuse me, height to the ankle joint, 
and then the shoe width, which or shoe thickness, which is 14. So we transfer that to the mid shoe line, and then from it, we take that So everything is perpendicular to the mid-sagittal line. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Now we connect them. Everything's either perpendicular to the mid line or it's parallel to the floor. Except for those two. Okay. Now we're ready for component preparation. And for that... How much would you worry about the fact that your stirrup actually is um, intersecting your... Not at all. If you have a flexible foot, if the patient's got a fixed deformity, then it becomes a big problem. So this particular stirrup we're using is a Becker. They come in one half inch or 12 millimeter increments. And the one that comes closest to our measurement is the 10 and a half. It is approximately four millimeters longer than our measured dimension. And so when I contour it, I will add um, two millimeters to the, to the overall width. For component preparation, the first thing we have to do is to find the midpoint of the axis on the base of the stirrup. To do that, we measure from the edge of each articulation and draw out that axis line. That measures 20... Uh, 257 millimeters, that's... Eight and a half. Okay. At that point... You want to take your handy automatic center punch and center punch it. You may want to do this more than once, or you may want to take a manual one and reinforce it just to make it a little bit deeper. So now we have the hole drilled. And we'll put a wood screw in there, and this will allow us to move the stirrup around the pivot point. And what we want to reverse is the mid sagittal line. just to the height of the calf fan. The shoe baseline. The 
the shoe width line. Notice the shoe baseline is within the outline of the orthosis. The only line that goes all the way across is the ankle axis line. So proximal thigh band, distal thigh band. Now the stirrup line. Make sure where there's a straight line, you want to keep it straight. 